Hi everyone. Uh, as Vaishnavi said, I'm a senior at Redmond High School, so yes, Redmond is better than STEM. <laughs> but I'd like to talk to you a little bit about STEM, more specifically about girls in STEM. So I've been interested in math and science for as long as I've, I remember. I played with Legos as a kid, I learned basic arithmetic at the age of three, and I've never really complained about my math homework. Uh, hard as that may be to believe. Uh, so as a result, I went to competitions around fourth grade. And I was pretty successful at this too. Uh, probably because I was doing what I loved. So I continued doing this through middle school and high school. But around seventh grade, I looked around and realized that there were no other girls around me. It was pretty much just me. And uh, so it just didn't really affect me because I'd been surrounded by guys most of my life. I was a tomboy when I was younger as well, so that probably helped. But other, other girls, they are turned away, they're scared away by what looks, what appears to be a guys club. And this is a serious problem. Not just here, not just for me. 66% of girls say that they enjoy math and science in fourth grade. But 57% of girls say that girls typically do not consider a career instead. 57% of college graduates are women, but only 20% of but but only 25% of STEM related jobs are held by women, and only 20% of physics, computer science, and engineering majors are held by, uh, are, are women. <coughs> this is something that is not sustainable. One of the biggest problems is that since 1990, the number of women in computer and ma mathematical sciences has actually decreased. The number, of the, the number of engineer women has stayed about the same, and the number of women biologists and chemists has only increased in recent years. This is not sustainable. Women are important contributors to society, and these, uh, without these underrepresented groups, society is missing an opportunity to progress even more. America is one of, arguably one of the most innovative countries in the world right now. So imagine where we could be if we were to add the entire power of women to this equation. Imagine where innovation would be. We would be unstoppable. And, but why is this so important? Girls provide an important addition and perspective to STEM fields. My experience has shown me that girls and boys do think differently at a fundamental level. For example, girls uh, like problem solving, and they enjoy focusing more on practical, practical work over theoretical. They like to work in groups instead of individually, and they want to do something where they can help people. Without this perspective in STEM, we are not re reaching our full potential. So what's causing all of this? The problem is that stereotypes and culture in America discourage girls. For example, you can see in this XKCD comic, uh, when someone who, well, when a guy makes a mistake in math, then it's just that guy who sucks at math. But when a girl makes a mistake in math, it's all girls who, are, who suck at math. It's not just that one person. And this is a problem. So, for example, if you were to, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this, especially in middle school. Go ask insert guy's name. He's better than me. Math is math just isn't for me. Math and science are lame. They're for nerds. Personally, I embrace the term nerd, but a lot of others don't. Twenty twenty-one percent of girls say that their parents uh, encourage them to become actresses, a job that is based around beauty and requires a lot of luck. The term starving artist is quite real. And, but only 10% of girls say that their parents encourage them to go into engineering, a field that is a lot more based on merit. We need, girl, we need to change the status quo. So that's why I started my program, Girls Rock and Science and Math. It, it, it was created to inspire girls to pursue their interests in STEM and show them that other girls are interested in science and math, not just them, like I thought I was. And we need to start early before they start to think that they are incapable or bad at math and science. In elementary school, that's when they're still interested in math and science, when they actually get their interest. 
In middle school, between peer pressure and parents, girls start to lose a lot of that interest in math and science. But, and, in high school, and by the time it's high school, it's too late. Some return, but most don't. So what can you do to help solve this problem? Don't let society keep you from doing what you love. If you truly love something, then ignore what society tells you to do, and just do it anyways. Be bold. Be a trailblazer like Margaret Hamilton, who was one of the first computer scientists who was female, and helped write much of the code that got the Apollo missions to the moon. Show others it's perfectly okay to do something that others like you just don't do. Show them you can do it. Prove them wrong. Convince, or better yet, just convince society it's completely normal. If, if you do, others will follow in your footsteps. And soon you won't be the only one. Soon you'll have made a difference just by doing what you love. And everyone else, it's your job to support these people, to give them all the support that they need and accept these trailblazers, because they'll need that support. But this isn't just for girls and, and isn't just for math and science. For example, my brother is in a field that's dominated almost exclusively by females, Indian classical dancing. But he doesn't let that stop him. He, does, he just does what he loves, and he's actually really good at it. So go out there. Make a difference by doing what you love. It's a win-win situation. Thank you.